The world of exported steam locomotives is a strange thing. For example, this is a Baldwin, built in the USA. And this is a Bayer Peacock, built in England. While this is a Mitsubishi, built in Japan. Design of these machines all stems from what the railroad ordering them wants, same as any railroad back home. If it's a railway with British or European investment, then of course the Baldwin is going to look British, sometimes even down to the smoke box dart. If it's a railroad that sticks with an Americanized look for their equipment, has American investment, or is in a country where more than just lamps are required, then it might well roll out a buyer peacock with a cowcatcher and a big headlight. There are usually some tells, though. British built engines usually retain the Bell Pair firebox, and if Americanized, have an uncounty look to them that makes them stand out. German engines usually have round cab doors and windows, along with a generally European aesthetic, while French engines just tend to look French, usually. There is also the level of Americanization performed by the railroad who bought said engine. Mozambique and Chile put American-style smoke boxes and number plates on every engine, even if the locomotive was British or German built. Some work, if you ignore the three-axle tender that was fairly uncommon on American exports, while some... don't. On the other side, some railroads standardized on what their look is, and have locomotives built to their design. Indian railways and South African railways are the kings of this, with most of SAR's designs coming from Germany or England and looking like distinct South African railways designs. India, meanwhile, did eventually start building these same designs in-house, but not before having them imported from other countries. In fact, the WG Class 282 on their broad gauge, I'm pretty sure, holds the record for locomotive built by most companies before its end of production in 1970. India was one of the biggest importers of steam post-World War II, as they solely replaced old British designs that, while okay, did not handle India's harsh climate that well. World War II American designs like the S-160 and India-exclusive AWE and AWD-CWD, which arrived mid-conflict to help with traffic flow, showed the engineers that more rugged American designs could handle the climate better, and post-war standard designs all followed American practice instead of British. In the world of locomotive construction, sometimes deadlines can't be met. Workshops are full, or vice versa. This is when, on occasion, work will either be contracted out, or in the more interesting way, engines will be built to the same, if not similar blueprints, by someone completely different. Here are a few examples. Rhodesia's 15th class Garretts. While the Garrett design was, of course, by our Peacock's thing, the last batch delivered to Rhodesia Railways were subcontracted to French builder Society Franco-Belge. However, engines still arrive with Bayer Peacock builder's plates. Three of the famous B-Class 040Ts from the Darjeeling Himalayan Railway were built by Baldwin to exact copies of the North British design due to them being unable to make the delivery schedule requested. The only difference on these engines were Baldwin builder's plates. The Chilean State Railway ordered light 482s from Baldwin in 1940. Originally planned to be a stopgap until heavier rail could be laid on certain lines, the railway liked them so much they went back to Baldwin in the early 1950s for a second batch. Baldwin effectively told them, we don't do steam anymore, and wouldn't complete the order unless for a high price. Mitsubishi would, though, and copies of the Baldwin designs were built by them, arriving in 1952. The most well-known exports were engines used during the World Wars. This is a topic I'd like to cover in more depth at a later date, but classes like the S-160 and S-118 are good examples. Both were exported to many countries during the war, and tons of both classes survived well beyond wartime, their post-war owners configuring them as fit, and either leaving them pretty close to army bog standard, or doing any number of modifications. Both S-118s and S-160s lasted well into the 1990s in regular service, an impressive feat for designs that were very much throwaway. Thank you for joining me for this first short episode, or Foreign Interest Crash Course. The next big episode will be out soon. If you enjoy my content and would like to support the future episodes, consider checking out my Kofi in the description.